I'm just hitting him, 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 him. I'm just knocking everyone. I cannot become depressed because I don't believe in it. Many young people, especially boys, have literally stopped me on the street since that first interview to ask me about Andrew Tate. I've been staggered, honestly. Plan. You have no plan. You have no plan whatsoever. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. Okay, so the days of easy money are gone. I want to like, even in the last two or three years, it was easy money mode. Who gets to decide where the line is? And whether people like Andrew Tate cross it? Is that guy unapologetically troll-like? Council State in Luton, I'm now a billionaire. I think that a lot of people don't understand that it's all of the challenges and struggles that's gonna make them, it's either gonna make or break them. I read, I don't read studies very often, but I was sent a study about stress from somebody. It's probably the best study I ever read. And it's talked about the placebo effect of stress. And it said that there, they took some of the most stressed people in the world, CEOs, etc., And the ones who believed that stress was really bad for them were dying earlier because of the cortisol inside of their blood. And they said, stress is really bad for them, they're having heart attacks. But the ones who believed that stress was good for them and it made them perform, I perform under pressure, stress is good for me, they were living longer. So the same drug inside of their blood, how they framed it inside of their mind had different effects on their body. So from that point onwards, even though I already thought this way, I knew I was the right way. I knew it was the right way to think innately because I've done pretty good in life that way, but this confirmed it. Every time I feel stressed or under pressure, I get excited. I, I, I hate to not be stressed. I wake up and I'm like, everything's fucked. Good. Yes. <laughs> like, that's just how I am, right? But it's it's how you adopt, it's how you look at the problems and how you use them to fuel you. So the question was, what's the problem for the average man today? What's the biggest problem? I think there's a whole host of problems. But what you have to do is frame it inside of your mind and understand that all of those problems are going to allow you, give you the fuel, the unlimited motivation that you need to become a successful and, and, and beautiful individual if you frame it in the right way. If you take a man and give him a life shielded from problems and he never has any to face, I guarantee you he's terrible at being a man. The best men in the world have gone through shit. That's just, that's why women love scars. Cause it didn't kill you. That's the whole point of it, right? So the best thing you can do as a man is look and go, okay, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard. I feel negative because these are all so difficult. I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. Let me internalize all of that and turn it into a superpower. Let me become genuinely uncomfortable with my situation in life and go and fix things. Because like I said, the universe is absolutely and utterly very giving. And if you truly hated being in the position you were in, you wouldn't be there very long. No, I do not believe in clinical depression. And you're never gonna, I'd love for you to try and convince me it's real, it'd be quite interesting. Do you but. think it's an invention of the US pharmaceutical industry to sell you pills? Well, I think that that's certainly part of it. I think that's part of it, but I've had this conversation with a bunch of people and my basic premise is that I refuse to believe in things that take power away from me. Mm. If if you are in a haunted house and you believe in ghosts, you're scared of the haunted house. If you're in a haunted house and you don't believe in ghosts, you're just in a house mm. and you don't care. So mm. I don't like the idea when someone explains to me the idea of one day waking up and being miserable and not wanting to live anymore and it's nothing to do with my circumstances and I have no power over it and no matter how good my life is, I'm still gonna feel terrible and I'm gonna wanna die. That's not an idea I subscribe to. That's not a reality I'm ever going to but want But that's a myself. reactive depression, isn't it? You can't be reactive depressed for the day, for example, feeling for a while. Feeling, even chronically. Yeah. Feeling yeah. depressed mm. is real. Yeah. Mm. Depression as a disease, I do not subscribe to. The idea, I believe, that if you feel depressed, something is depressing you, mm. and you should try your best to fix it. You should take control of your life and do your best to fix it. The idea, yeah. but they don't say that. They don't talk that. They say depression like it's this magic thing that comes out the sky mm. and it gets in your brain, you're sad no matter what, and there's nothing you can do about it, and you need to only take pills. And I think that's a very bad way to look at the world, and that's a bad idea to subscribe to. And if you start to feel depressed, let's say your girl leaves you and you start to feel depressed, but you believe in the idea of depression, you're now gonna start diagnosing yourself as clinically depressed, yeah. self-hypnosing yourself into hypnotizing yourself into being clinically depressed. And, and it's amazing how you can speak things into existence. I cannot become depressed because I don't believe in it. So, so how, how about chemical imbalances in the brain? Bullshit, that's all been disproved anyway. <laughs> really? So it's all, it's all been disproved. Firstly, that's all been disproved. And secondly, even if that was true, even if I had a chemical imbalance in my brain, I do not believe in depression. That's just who I am as a person. I don't believe in it. I do not believe in things that take power away from me. So, I, I'm, and people sit there and they try very hard to convince me it's real, which is actually quite interesting because it's always usually depressed people who sit there and try very hard to defend this idea. If you're so scared, if depression's so terrible, why are you sticking up for it? Why are you fighting so hard to convince me it's such a, it's such a powerful force? Why shouldn't you be doing the opposite? Shouldn't you be listening to me 
whose team are you on? Like, do you want to be depressed? Like, it's mm-hmm. insanity. These people are so desperate to push this idea. Then you add in the pharmaceutical element and the fact that everyone's taking these fucking drugs, mm-hmm. messing with their brain chemistry. It's garbage. I think that you feel depressed sometimes because you're human. So you felt depressed at times, would you Every, say? We're all human. Yeah, because I felt depressed. I mean, I had some major, I might not sound big, but some major dental surgery done. Yeah. And it really got me down for a while. But my businesses and running those, to be honest, picked me up because it was like, I can't be like this. Get in there, do some business. Well, it, completely. And also, let's look at it. Let's let's pretend I'm completely wrong, right? It does, we, we can look at situational depression like you just described. We can talk about brain uh, imbalance and chemical imbalance. We can talk about clinical depression that you get and it's chronic and there's nothing you can do about it, whatever. Let's pretend all these things are completely true. The best option, the best thing to do is still to get up, be an adult, control your emotions, be stoic, and do the things you're supposed to do day after day. Laying in bed and doing nothing is never gonna be the best option. The best option is still to go to the gym, to work hard, to run your business, to be successful. So it doesn't matter. We're talking about the different positions on the chessboard. But if the rules of the game remain the same, regardless of the position you're still trying to win, you, you still have to do the same things. So does it even matter at this mm-hmm. point? If you come along and say he's depressed because of X and he's depressed because of Y and he's depressed because of Z and the answer to all of them is still the same thing, then I don't give a fuck why you're depressed. All I know, what I will state as a matter of fact is this world is hyper competitive, especially as a man. Mm-hmm. Most men are walking through life and they don't realize that it's constant competition. Mm-hmm. I was driving here, even as I was driving here, I was looking out the window and I was looking at all these people just walking around. One of them had a fucking croissant. One of them was dressed like a dickhead because it's London. He thinks he fucking looks cool. He's <laughs> a fucking moron. We've all seen them. Yeah, moron. <laughs> Some of the dude just talking shit on the phone. Some of the guy with headphones in waiting to be fucking murdered, wouldn't even hear it coming. And all these NPCs, I'm just looking at them going, do they realize they're in endless constant competition? Every single pound they want, someone else wants. Every single girl they want, someone else wants. There are people like me out here. I will destroy, you could get all 30 of them in a room and I will sit by myself and absolutely annihilate them in any single metric. And they're just sitting there just fucking floundering and wandering through life, unaware of how competitive the world is. Well, and whinging how unfair it is. And whinging how unfair it is. And this is my point. If the world is truly that competitive, you do not have time to be depressed because it's a non-competitive mind state. Mm. I, you can be depressed for X, Y, Z, whatever. I'm not depressed. And I want the money you want, and I want the girl you want, and I want the status you want, and the car you want, and the house you want. And I'm going to get it, and you're fucking not. And that's the bottom line of life. If you gave that guy that stuff, he probably wouldn't be depressed. Anyway. Well, he's get up off his ass and work then, doesn't business. he? And this is the point. <laughs> yeah. He probably so, would because he wouldn't have a direction in life. I think it's a very empowering message that you share. And, you know, you can. I think if you can fix it with pills, you can probably fix it by going to the gym and, and doing all of these other but aspects. But pills doesn't even about. fix it. Pills just numbs it. Mask. It yeah. masks it. Well, it's not a holistic way to treat it, is it? Whereas what you're saying is more so. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is you're playing a game and it's a competitive game and you need to build a mindset that allows you to be ultra competitive. And if you want to sit there and say, no, I want a non-competitive mindset, then fine. You know what you call people who do not win competitions? Losers. Correct. I do not like to hang around with men who suffer from a lack of women. Because in my experience, any man who can't get women will eventually sell you out for women. It's too powerful a force. Too powerful a force. If, you, if you're completely sex deprived all the time, sooner or later, you're gonna sell your boys out for sex, whether it's his ex or some girl talking bad about your boy, but you really want the pussy, so you let her slide. But if you're not good with girls, I don't wanna to talk to you. Second thing is money. You have not be rich, rich, but if you're starving, you're gonna try and, you're gonna try and sneak some money out of somebody. Right? If you, if you can't eat, you'll do anything for food. If you can't pay the bills, you'll do anything for money. That means whether it's a plea bargain, whether it's trying to rob me, whether it's money sitting around my house. I don't want to talk to the extremely broke people. I don't want to talk to extremely sex deprived people for the same reason I wouldn't have a whole bunch of food around a hungry person. Same reason, it's the first two things. Next thing is, is loyalty. And I know that's super hard to judge, but I really like to believe that the, the few people I hang around with, if we were all in separate police interviews and they were to come and say, hey, your boy turned, I could literally burst out laughing. <laughs> Hey, bro, you better come with a new story, G. You better go away and think about it and come back. We can talk, but don't try that one. Try again. So loyalty is very, very important. Next is bravery, because can't fight is fine, but won't fight isn't. Won't fight is unacceptable in everyone. If I'm with my five friends and I'm going toilet in the club and I come back and I see a, a, someone punch one of my friends, I am annihilating anybody in that guy's crew. We'll find out why later. My guy could have been wrong. My guy could have been, it could have been my guy's fault. I'm just hitting him, 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 him. I'm just knocking everyone. When everyone's asleep and the threat is neutralized, I'm like, bro, 
fuck was that about? Oh, I started it. It's like, oh, I'm fucking. But <laughs> first, for later. first, people have to pay, right? We'll worry about the whys afterwards. So they have to have that loyalty and that devotion to the bravery, the ability to fight. I find it very crazy. I find it crazy. And I say this often to guys. I say, you're rolling around with these men who won't even fight to protect you because they're cowards. So they'll watch you get your head stomped to death and, and cower out and not even try and help you. And they'll be like, yeah, but he's funny. But he's funny? We're talking about life and death. You're talking about fucking funny? Like, so if, if, I, if I can smell on someone that they wouldn't even attempt, I don't want to be anywhere near them for the same reason. And general professionalism. I've, I've, I've developed a habit where I punish myself for the smallest in professional actions. If I misplace my keys or misplace my phone, and it takes me more than 10 minutes to find it, I'll punish myself for that. Regardless, whether it's I don't spend money this week, or I don't go here, or I'm canceling that, or I'm gonna defer buying something I want to buy. I punish myself religiously so that next time I put my phone down, I know where I put my phone. Next time I put it down, I know where I put it all the time. When I put it down, I know where my phone is. So when I'm around people like, hey, I lost my keys, or hey, bro, I forgot. That I, when I'm around sloppy people, I don't like it. I like people who have their lives in order. When I, when I detect sloppiness, I don't really want them too close because gaps are where people, things sneak in. Other things are basic OPSEC, really basic OPSEC. I like that if I'm around my friends, if I'm ever sitting with my back to a room, this is an enclosed environment, but in a normal restaurant, I never sit with my back to the room. But if I have to do it, I like that my, fr I never do it, but if I have to do it, the people I roll with, they'll literally give me a nod. We'll sit down at dinner and I have to sit here, they'll go, and they'll pay extra attention for me because I can't see behind me. I like that level of professionalism. I like that. I like people, like I said, don't we get weak, no hangovers, no crying their eyes out, no cowardice. It's infectious. Don't like that round. No negativity. Don't like that round. So there's certain things that I, 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 I create a very, very particular reality. And it's actually interesting because to me, these things are all normal. But when you have these kind of standards, you pretty hard to find friends. You're like, oh, you're a dumbass. You're a pussy. You're like, it's, and you don't, you don't talk to that many people. But if you get a crew together that act that way, it's amazing how, not to get all airy fairy, but it's almost an intangible. When you have six men in one place who are perspicacious, who are paying attention, who do have their things right, who don't lose things, who do, do it, the whole room can step. When me and my crew walk in a room, even if it's, it's almost like an energy, some guy can be eating his dinner and not even see us walk in and go, six predators, it's like the rabbit when the fox comes, like you can smell when the, like the guys turn up. You know what I mean? And, and everyone's experienced it, everyone's seen it. So anyone I associate with, I have these very, very, these very, very stringent metrics. And they're basically just to make sure that nobody gets inspired by something they can't resist to snake us. And also nobody's overly sloppy and allows a way for us to be infiltrated and destroyed. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only gonna be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're gonna stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's gonna ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I wanna be as important and strong and good hearted and God fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Dame Sheila Hancock says we've become too over emotional as a society, crying too much about everything. Has well, she got a point? She's completely right. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not gonna hurt people. He's gonna sit and think about his actions very carefully and he's gonna be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're gonna find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world.
absolutely nothing wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head, completely nothing wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're gonna feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there, you cry your eyes out or blame other people. A lot of, a lot of the problem with people, especially in the world today is they, they misunderstand the difference between a, a dream and a plan. And nothing good in your life is ever going to happen by accident. If you see a guy in fantastic shape, you don't say, how'd you get in great shape? And he goes, it just oops, happened. oops, <laughs> I just fell. And it, no, he, he ate a specific way. He trained a specific time. He did specific things for a specific outcome. And it's the same with finances. And most people who are broke, if you say, do you want to be rich? Yeah, I want to be rich. Mm. How are you going to get rich? One day. I'll win the lottery. Yeah, dumb shit. <laughs> you, have no, you have no plan. <laughs> you have no plan whatsoever. No actionable steps. Mm. No, you're not doing things daily. You're just hoping some point in the future, God's going to just, just dump it on your doorstep. Mm. Guess what? It ain't going to fucking happen. Mm. And unless you have a plan, a specific plan, I'm sure you guys had a very, you had a plan and you worked hard to get to your points. I, I had a plan. Everything was like, okay, today we have to do day after day after day until you mm. get there. And this is what most people don't have because they're too arrogant or too lazy. I don't think it's stupid. I think most people, if you laid out a plan and they tried their very best and they were willing to learn, could do it. Mm. I don't think people are too stupid to make money. They're just too lazy or too arrogant to make money. That's the problem with people. Okay, so the days of easy money are gone. I want to like, even in the last two or three years, it was easy money mode. Every idiot you knew was making money. Every clown had made money on a pump. You know, a number of people who thought they were expert crypto traders in the last three years. It's so funny. I'm a great crypto trader. Everything went up. It all went up. We, we, like, what do you mean you're a great trader? You could have bought anything. You bought poo dick coin and Those made coins. money. <laughs> of course you're a trader. Like that, all that shit's over, right? So all the easy money's gone. It's all cyclical. So all the amateurs are going to start suffering because now we're entering the realm of the professional and making money is going to be harder than it's ever been. Yeah. All the free money's disappearing. You have to become very, very confident and competent. And that's one of the things about the last few years. Anyone who made money in those years, you, a lot of them didn't learn any lessons. A lot of them didn't learn how to make money. They just got lucky and just picked up a pump or caught an eye, caught some garbage, but they didn't actually learn anything specifically. The best way to make money in the world today certainly has to be something online. I think that making money online gives you absolute freedom of your own geography. It gives you access to the largest possible customer base, but it's it's interesting. It's, a, it's an attention economy and Truthfully, without saying too much, you either need to be prepared to get a whole bunch of attention on you, like we're all yeah. doing here, or you need to be close to somebody who's doing that. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the money is flowing nowadays. Now, I don't believe there's a person on the planet who pays attention, tries their best, is never lazy, is on time, works hard, has a mentor, and is giving it his all, who isn't rich. I don't believe it. I think that if you do all those things, you're rich. And if you don't have any money, you're missing one of those key elements. Now you can fool yourself and you can fool everyone else and you can pretend you're doing them, but if you're truly honest with yourself, am I finding people who are trying to teach me what I wanna know and am I trying my best? Invest in yourself, get knowledge, pay attention to mentors, start another business, open something. You need to do something because you're not gonna save your way to the top. If you need to save 100% of your wage, mm. you're still gonna be broken. Mm. You have to get to a level of earning Mm. And it's that spirit you need to have when it comes to money. And, and when you get up to the top, you realize there's money everywhere. Mm. The abundance mindset, there are so many rich people. So if you're not where you want to be financially, I hope this pisses you off. Because mm. I'm telling you to annoy you that you're sitting there struggling to pay your bills. There are people out there making so much money you couldn't possibly fathom who have anything they want all of the time. And you may sit there and go, oh, but they're miserable. A lot of them aren't. Trust me, they're having a great time. So you need to make a bunch more money because there's money everywhere.